A lot of people don't know, but you can see major progress in your drumming with just 15 minutes a day. I talk to my online students about this all the time. So I'm gonna give you five things that you need to do to make sure that you're getting the most bang for your buck out of your practice time even if you only have a very small amount every day. Every week on the live calls with my online students, I constantly am talking about this with them because they have questions about it. And that is how do I get more out of my practice time? Many of them just don't have that much time to practice. So it's not like, oh, it would be nice to have two hours. I, they don't have two hours. How can I get 15, 20 minutes? How can I maximize that? And here's the thing, I'm learning Spanish right now and I'm, it's 10 or 15 minutes a day. Right, and you say, well, it's gonna take longer to learn it. Well, yeah, that's not the question though. The question is, how do we get the most out of that time? All right, here's the five things we need to do. The first thing you need to do if you only have 15 minutes a day is you need to have it organized. So you need to know what you're going to be practicing before you get to your practice time, okay? So I'm gonna sit down at some point during the week and I'm gonna plot out what I'm practicing because if I only have that much time, usually I'm gonna be on the same topic for a longer period of time. So before I ever get to my practice time, I already know exactly what I'm gonna be practicing. I'm gonna be working on Groove B from this book or whatever that is. That's the first thing. What we don't wanna do is show up and spend 10 of our 15 minutes trying to figure out what we're gonna do because then we get frustrated. So coming in with a game plan before you even start is crucial, especially when you only have a small amount of time to practice. The second thing you need to do is you need to focus on a very small and specific piece of material. So you're not gonna come in and cover three topics in 15 minutes. You're going to work on one topic and you're gonna be revisiting that same topic every time you show up to your practice time. Because if we only have small amounts of time to put in, then the way you're gonna see that progress is having those small daily wins. What is your win for today? We start off every live student call. I do live calls with my online students. Uh, I've got an online drum school. You can The link is below. There's still a 14 day free trial going on. Every week we do a couple of calls and the thing we start off the live Q&A calls with is what is your win? Because I want everybody to constantly be looking at what their win is for the day, okay? And the way we see that consistent progress is to consistently practice the same thing, the same material for longer periods of time. And if we have shorter amounts of time to practice, obviously we need to do that for more days, okay? So we're gonna be very, very specific with what we're going to be practicing. One thing, if it's that short of amount of time, one thing. What I tell my students is any less than 20 or 30 minutes, we're only working on one topic. The third thing is we need to get granular, what I call granular in your practice time. Let's say that I'm working on a groove that's uh, somewhat of a simple pop groove like this. But let's say it sounds more like this. Okay, so when I'm going through that, there's a specific part of that that I keep slowing down for, right? Okay, so if I come in and I only have 15 minutes, I'm not going to spend my 15 minutes doing this. I'm not gonna run the whole groove, because here's the thing, that second part of the groove, you can play that second part fine. It's that first little section. So I'm gonna zoom in on that and I'm gonna figure out what that is. See, this is how we get the most out of a very small amount of time. We zoom in on that. So we zoom in on that part and I'm having trouble specifically with this pattern. That pattern, specifically that second kick drum note. So that. So what I wanna do is I wanna utilize something that I talk all the time with my students about, and that is feedback loop. When we're practicing something, we need to decide what the pain point is, the place that's hanging us up, because all too often I'll have students say, um, I can't play that drum beat. And they'll play it and I'll say, no, actually you can play that drum beat fine. You can't play beat one, specifically the upbeat of beat one. The rest of the drum beat is fine. And we'll do that with songs too, I can't play that song. No, you can play that whole song. Actually, you're just having a problem with that verse. If you get the verse, 
verse, you've got the rest of the song. And so that's what we wanna do. We wanna get granular and we wanna shorten the feedback loop. A feedback loop needs to hit the pain point, give us immediate feedback, and then we hit it again. The more times we hit that pain point and the quicker we hit that pain point, the quicker we're gonna start carving those neural pathways in our brain, that myelin's gonna start growing and we're going to see that skill be learned, all right? That's how we learn it. So I'm not gonna run that whole groove, I'm gonna run this. I may not run the rest of the groove for a couple of days if I can't get that down. You might be like, Stephen, that is not very much to work on. But here's the cool thing, this is a pattern you see all the time. It's a very common pattern. If we master it in this one, groove, then we can master it in the other grooves too. So it's a word now that we know. That's why we wanna go so deep on it. So I really wanna work on that and then I wanna start putting one small thing with it. So I go here. I'm gonna go over and over and over that and smooth it out. If I cannot play it, I'm not going to play it with a metronome. That's something we don't need to do up front. Save that for later. Learn the stickings first and then bring in the metronome later. So I'm gonna get really, really granular. First thing we're gonna do is know what you're gonna work on ahead of time. I love knowing this because I look forward to it all day when I'm going to my practice time. The second thing we need to do is be consistent and work on one small thing. One small thing, not three, not two, one small thing if we have a very short amount of time. The third thing we need to do is get granular. Don't just run the exercise over and over. Figure out what the pain point is, figure out where the problem is, create a small feedback loop where you're, you're hitting it, giving yourself feedback how to correct it, and you're going through that over and over and over. The fourth thing you need to do is you need to be consistent. I actually just said it a, a second ago. You need to be consistent. Practicing for 15 minutes a day once a week, it's not gonna get you very far, but there is a lot of power in small amounts of practice time that build up over a longer period of time. Like I'm learning Spanish and I'm learning it with 10 and 15 minute increments a day. You might say that might take forever. Well, I'm not in a race. I'm just trying to learn the language the same way you're trying to learn the language of drumming. And that's what we want to do. We need to be focusing on a small amount of material, get granular with it, plan what we're going to be working on, and then be consistent like two, three, four weeks, work on this stuff until you master it. And the fifth thing we need to do is we need to be tracking our progress. In a, in a practice journal, you just simply need to put down what you did, what was wrong with it, what was good with it, what was your win for the day? Where are you gonna pick up the next day?